Okay, I'd like to introduce you to a new tool in Nebulosity, the Synthetic Background or Automatic Flat Field tool. Now, this isn't designed to completely replace your flat fields, but you'll still find sometimes, for example, take a look at this shot of M51 of mine. You'll see in this corner here, it's decidedly darker than it is in this corner. And in fact, it's a pretty complex kind of shape that we actually have to the gradient in here. Well, the Synthetic Background tool, which is something that uh, I put together with a another user and programmer, Emmanuel Leface, um, tries to actually pick, uh, pick this sort of thing out. Let's just try this and see what it does first. If I just hit OK, after a second or so, we can see that it's actually done a pretty nice job of flattening out the field. All right, so now what is it actually doing and how does this work? Well, if we take a look at the tool here, we take a look at the uh, options in this. First one to really take a look at here is this number of points per dimension. What that's really talking about is how many samples along the image here in each dimension is it doing? Now, it's always going to do one here. And then the question is, how many other points are you going to have? So if you just tell it one other point, it's going to do the upper left and the upper right, and then the corresponding points along the y-axis. So it would be a grand total of four points. So it would give you a nice linear gradients in each dimension to be able to pick that out. In fact, let's try that. Let's take a look at the synthetic flat field. Let's tell it to do just one dimension, one point, excuse me. And we'll see that, in fact, it's going to do a pretty nice job at actually pulling it out. There's still a little bit, a little bit of a ring here it didn't pick out, but it's doing a pretty reasonable job. If we go and we let it do a little bit more here, like we do three, we can see again what it does here. You can see it does a more accurate fit. But that's not to say that more points are always going to be better. In fact, let's take this uh, up here and we'll say, all right, let's, let's go, oh, I don't know, six points. Now when it comes back, oh, wait a minute, we've got a real problem. And you've got a real problem because it's put six points in each dimension here. And so one of the things that it's sampled nicely is the galaxy that we're trying to actually have here. And so it's actually fitted the galaxy. If we take a look at what it's returned here, if you tell this this six points and you tell it to return the synthetic flat instead, you'll see what it's actually pulling out of the image. This is what it's picked up here as its estimate of the background. Now that's got the galaxy in there too. We don't want that. So if we do the synthetic flat field and we tell it to do a fewer number of points, in fact, even let's take a look at the synthetic flat for the three, what this is doing is it's saying, okay, look, we're gonna grab one here another one here, another one there, nicely missing the galaxy, and you can see the kind of thing it's gonna come up with. So one thing that you may wanna keep in mind as you're doing this is if you have something nice and bright in the middle, always have an odd number of additional points and it's gonna do a little bit more to skip over the middle. And the fewer points you use, the more that it's going to be able to skip over something nice and bright in the middle. All right, so now I've shown it to you on this grayscale image, but of course a lot of us have color images as well. So here is a just, this is actually just a single raw file here. And you can see there are definite, there's a definite color hue and there's a definite gradient in this as well. One of the nice things about the synthetic flat tool is that it's mod, it tries to model each of the colors independently. So now you can see that it nicely pulled out that color uh, uh, that color cast that the image had because it separately came up with red, green, and blue estimates of the background and it pulled that out. So again, we can take a look at this and we can see what it's actually returning. You'll see that it's going to come up with this reddish, pinkish kind of image and that's what it's pulled out. Now, one last little bit on this. You'll notice that there are two options here. Uh, you can uh, return the synthetic flat field. We've seen that. Or you can divide instead of subtracting the synthetic flat field. What that's going to do is it's going to scale the image just like when you're doing a normal flat and it's going to try to end up, uh, it'll scale the image as opposed to just uh, um, subtracting it. With that, one issue is that you don't get the same sort of benefit of the, uh, uh, the color balance, although there's always the uh, option, the auto color balance in Nebulosity, which is a tool that's been around for a good long time and as you can see, very, very nicely takes that out. So there it is. That's the synthetic flat tool. And again, I'd like to thank Emmanuel for his help in developing this.